Another year, another new entry in the eternally growing series known as Sword Art Online, which is a very divisive series and a series that I myself have talked about a disturbing number of times. Where did that go? How did all of her uh, character just uh, vanish? She is an empty house now. Fuck! SAO is an interesting one. Yet, despite my constant gripings aimed at the series, I keep finding myself back again for more, and this odd desire to continue subjecting myself to Reki Kawahara's infinite world of nonsensical storytelling ultimately led me to an opening night IMAX screening of Sword Art Online Progressive Aria of a Starless Night, the ultimate cinematic experience for the ultimate piece of cinema. Uh, and I'll be honest, this film was actually f***ing incredible. If you're still in the dark on what exactly SAO Progressive is, let me give you a brief explanation. It's basically just Sword Art Online's Aincrad arc remade, now with slower pacing, a handful of juicy retcons, and an all-around much more well-structured story. And this film in particular adapts the Aria of a Starless Night story from the first Progressive volume, which focuses on the opening events of Sword Art Online from the perspective of Fuck not Kirito, Asuna, Yuki. Now, while I have read the first volume of the original SAO light novel, I haven't actually read Progressive's light novel as of writing this video, so I don't have a whole lot to say regarding the actual adaptation from text to screen. Just wanted to note that before saying that holy fuck is this so much better than literally anything in the original anime's Aincrad arc, what the actual fuck? I feel as though my surprise with this film's quality really came down to my own lack of nostalgia for the original SAO. Somehow, even without any nostalgia, this remake hooked me in 100% and I enjoyed it quite a goddamn lot. I never really had that crushing disappointment many others have spoken about, wherein I really liked the original premise but was super let down by the execution as the story progressed. I genuinely never really cared much for SAO, even from the start. That premise failed to hook me, and I never really got the appeal of that story, simply because I felt it was presented in such a boring way. Yet somehow, Progressive retroactively has really hooked me into this premise, this fantasy world, primarily by actually allowing us as the audience more than a handful of minutes to experience it before jumping immediately on to something else. It lets us sit with the characters, get to know them, get to empathize with them, get to like them. It does everything I never knew I wanted from SAO. I really love how we get a decent chunk of time in the film set before SAO even launches. We get to experience Asuna's life in the real world. We get introduced to our friendship with Mito. Uh, we get a terrific buildup to Asuna making the mistake of borrowing her brother's headset to mess around with the game for a few minutes on launch day. Asuna is a far more interesting protagonist than Kirito simply because of how alien most of this world really is to her, and her relationship with Mito is probably the highlight of the film simply because of the nuance explored in their dynamic. Mito is there to protect her until she isn't. There's a thematic through line in the film regarding the idea of self-preservation, and whether or not a person's attempt to keep themselves alive at the sake of abandoning others is something that truly makes them morally bad. This idea is something Asuna gets directly faced with around halfway into the film, and it not only allows for her character to thrive throughout the remainder of the runtime, but it also just retroactively adds to each of her brief character moments present in the original series. A brief moment of hesitation before accepting Kirito's request for a temporary party. A lack of faith in any meaning behind a truce like this, an element that allows her initial dynamic with Kirito to be far more interesting than it ever was before, simply because now, Kirito's choices will have have further impacts on Asuna's worldview. This adds stakes to everything he does and makes his character far more interesting as a result. There's a moment, almost immediately after Kirito is properly introduced in the film, where he tries putting his sword back into its sheath, but keeps missing the slot and just kind of continues failing at his attempts to put it away for a solid several seconds. Uh, he's awkward cringy and actually likable. This scene adds so much character for Kirito, it's actually insane. Like, this small moment eclipses all of his so-called depth in the original Aincrad arc. His early interactions with Asuna are just so painfully awkward and stilted, and God, is, is it nice to see. This side of Kirito really rounds out his character. It gives us a much 
fuller look at who he is as a person and helps keep his stupidly overpoweredness from defining who he is as a character within the movie's runtime. I think SAO Progressive's biggest feat is demonstrating how very tiny, very subtle changes can have monumental impacts on the narrative as a whole, and how certain sequences come off as a viewer. My least favorite moment from episode 2 of the original series is that scene where Asuna finally flips off her hood and there's just this awkward moment where the show is like, Wow, that, that, that's, that's a, what a, what a twist. Oh, she, she's hot. Uh, betcha uh, didn't see that coming. It's awful and stupid and just, ugh. But it doesn't come off like that in the progressive movie. And in, in fact, somehow against all odds, what was once my least favorite scene of that episode became a scene that gave me literal chills when watching it on that giant IMAX screen. This moment has given purpose. Asuna's cloaking of herself seems pretty largely tied to her aversion to looking forward and taking charge. She's hiding, not only from Mito, but from herself. But soon after Mito realizes who she is, Asuna realizes her role to play as well, and we get a terrific moment where she flips back the hood nonchalantly before finally taking charge and dashing into action. It's so fucking good. And even from Kirito's side of things, this moment is no longer reduced to Oh wow, she's hot. The two meet in an earlier scene where Kirito helps her out, but in all their later meetings, she's wearing the hood and doesn't reveal her identity to him. So in this moment, as she's finally freeing herself from this self-imposed isolation and cowardice, he makes the connection that she's the girl he had met before. That's not even the focal point of the scene. The scene's all focused on Asuna's moment of growth here. The point I'm illustrating here is that even outside of the perspective we're viewing in the movie, the other characters and the interweaving of these moments with their character beats are all a great in this film. The other notoriously bad scene from episode 2 was, of course, Kirito's edgy, uh, <laughs> beater speech. He's a beta tester and a cheater. He's a beater! A beater? Yeah, that's good. I like it. And, okay, yeah, yeah, actually, it's, it's still the, the same, almost word for word in progressive. <laughs> It's not cool to put me in the same class with those noobs. And yeah, it remains one of the cringiest sequences I've ever had the displeasure of sitting through. But in Progressive, there's still far more meaning to it than the confused and messy reasons Kirito had for giving the speech in the original series. In Progressive, it's made clear that he's specifically giving the speech in an attempt to keep Asuna, along with a couple fellow beta testers in the room, from being villainized in any way. The original anime tried to do something similar, but failed in execution quite immensely, lacking any real emotional depth leading into the speech dripping with edge. The film ends with a pretty big retcon. Instead of Kirito doubling down on his edge and ditching Asuna, he comes back down to reality and Asuna decides to stay with him, and the two enter Floor 2 together. I actually really liked this change and felt it was a fantastic ending. Really the biggest line that I felt strong distaste towards in the movie was a line Asuna delivers to Mito, just a bit before this ending scene, where she says, and yes, I am very much ad-libbing here. I've decided how I want to live my life. I want to follow him wherever he goes. She, of course, then runs after Kirito following this moment, but just... I feel like this is the one moment in the movie that just felt severely unearned. While she and Kirito really did have a compelling dynamic in the movie, I don't feel the time they shared together was enough to warrant Asuna basically deciding that Kirito is her future. <laughs> Perhaps if we got a few more meaningful moments between the two of them, this wouldn't have felt so jarring, but as it is, it just feels a bit too early for her to be speaking of him in this kind of way. It's also just a bummer that we probably won't see much more of Mito in the future, as I really think her dynamic with Asuna was probably the biggest highlight of the movie, which is something I've heard reiterated by many others I've spoken to. So, uh, <laughs> here's something interesting relating to that that some of you may be a bit surprised by. Mito, apparently, isn't in the progressive novels. She's a completely anime original character written for this movie specifically. What? When I heard that, I was shocked to all hell because that dynamic was really the emotional core of the movie. I'll eventually get around to reading the progressive novels to really get a feel for how they actually are quality-wise, but the fact that this wasn't something originally present there threw me for quite a loop. But overall, SAO Progressive, Aria of a Starless Night, was the first SAO property in... 
well, well, literally ever, that has made me genuinely excited to see what happens next. I'm so ready to see where it goes next, and there's already a second movie announced for next year, so we won't have to wait long at all. I'm really enjoying this feeling, this feeling of actually being excited for a fucking Sword Art Online movie. <laughs> <sighs> no more time skips, just a progressive advancement up the floors of Aincrad, one by one. I'm really... The film will be adapting the fourth volume in the Sword Art Online Progressive series, a retelling of the original light novel's first arc. The volume tackles how players progress past the fifth floor in Aincrad. The first film adapted the first half of Volume 1, so Volume 1 Part 2 and Volume 2 and 3's story will not be adapted by the sequel and thus be skipped over. 